hello and welcome back. I am Maester Alix and this is Shadowrun Hong Kong. We are right back where we left off here in the uh, lower portion of our boathouse. We had just spoken to our uh, reactor friend there. And, uh, yep. See that there is indeed a storage space. He seems like an amiable sort. I like him. All right, let's get our mission and get going. Your workstation and mission computer. The cool blue tones of the workstation's menu, main menu fill the screen. A blinking message in the upper right corner notifies you of six unread messages. All right, um, check. Welcome to Hioi from Kindly Chang. Maester, on behalf of your friends at the Hioi Chamber of Commerce and the Swift Winds Mahjong Parlor, I welcome your uh, welcome you to the community of Hioi to our new business venture. I have already lined up three jobs for you. The details of each are contained in the separate computer message. Remember to check your messages often as I will update you on new opportunities as they occur on TC. Well, that's nice. Your mission computer. From Isabel. Hey, Maester, I've set up your mission computer to automatically collect and collate news reports and information and media that might be of interest to you. Uh, some of the keywords that I've got trolling for are things like Raymond, Duncan, Walled City, etc. I've also patched the in a permanent link to the Hong Kong Shard of the Shadowland BBS. It's a great place to connect with other runners, sell pay data, get news from the streets, and so on. Don't be shy about taking a look. I won't. Resources. From Bao. Ooh, Strangler Bao. I have been instructed to inform you of the various suppliers present in Hioi. Auntie Chang has cultivated a community, or a commercial district of well-stocked and trustworthy vendors. Whoever you choose to do business with, you will be in good hands. Ermine Cafe at Club 88 is an excellent resource for acquiring additional weapons should you require any. If you are in need of medical supplies, go to the Parlor of Five Phases. If you desire training in a path of the addict, seek, uh, seek out Spider Shen. She can help you as well as supply you with any close quarter weapons that you may desire. Chrome Alley is the place to, for your so, cybernetic enhancements and medical supplies. The proprietor, Ten Armed Ambrose, is a cyber surgeon of some repute. Uh, Law's Techno Palace is a uh, wampun run supplier of the local decking community. The place is hard to miss, just look for a signing, sign glowing in the sky. And should you need, if you need drones, Reliable Matthew's Robot Bazaar is your best bet, and I pity you. Best of luck in the shadows. As fresh meat, you are likely to need it. Strangler Bao. Thanks, Bao. That's awesome. You're the best. I love your support. Jerk. From Kindly Chang. I've got a problem, Maester, and you're going to help me solve it. I do a lot of business with the Wapoans. If you're not familiar with them, I'll forgive you. You're an outsider, after all. The Wapoans are a tribe of techno-fetishists and deckers who uh, have taken up residence in the Wampoa Garden area of Hong Kong. Uh, they make and trade high-tech goods for people from all, from all over the world. A lot of Nguyen passes through their pasty little fingers, and they make a lot of money brokering deals between them and smugglers here in Hioi. I've hit a snag, though. The Wampoan elders, their council of leaders, are being eliminated by a serial killer. They've asked me to dispatch someone to get the, to the bottom of them to stop the killing, and they're not taking their goods through my turf. And they're not taking their goods through my turf until I do. So you're going to be my proxy, dear. I don't care how you do it, but I need those murderers stopped. The Wampoans have a delegate here in Hioi by the name of Maximilian Law. I missed that. Okay, well, we'll take it. Good, I'll tell the elders you're coming. They don't like outsiders, uh, and they might shoot at you if you don't warn them that you'll be arriving. Back to root. New messages. Artifact liberation. Welcome to the shadows, Maester. I've received a request from an archaeologist named Mr. Drake. He's interested in liberating certain artifacts from beneath the manor house located in Tai Po. I have attached a copy of a video message that he sent me. The screen flicks a few times and the email is replaced with the face of a stern-looking orc. Hello, Madam Chang. I've heard that you that you're a woman who knows how to get things done, especially with regards to things that aren't legal in the strictest sense. That's exactly the kind of help I'm looking for. 
Recently, a rich investor by the name of Liu Ha decided to expand his manor house on the outskirts of Tai Pao. Too much money, not enough space for fancy parties. He had a snag with the local government officials, however. They suspected the lands of his estate was built on may have uh, pre-modern archaeological artifacts buried beneath it, all of them dating from the Song Dynasty. Consequently, I was con contracted as an archaeologist to oversee the excavations to ensure everything was properly recorded and catalogued. Sure enough, they were only a few days into the excavation when we discovered a series of tombs laying underneath this, the site. The scope of the tomb... Ah! Lu sold the entire site to Tan Tin, who then leased it back to him. Because Tan Tin is considered to have extraordinary uh, extraterritoriality, in, extraterritoriality in Hong Kong, local authorities are powerless to stop Lu from looting the tombs. He immediately began building a museum, if you can call it that, atop the site. He had the gall to call his museum the Emperor's Tomb. Can you believe that? The odds that there's being an actual emperor buried there is basically nil, but he doesn't care. Anything to sell a few tickets. Lu has continued the excavation using Tantine contractors to expand the dig. What he didn't know is that I bugged the comlink before he fired me. Based on what I've heard, something strange is going on in the lower levels. Workers have been disappearing, only to be found dead several days later. Whatever is down there is too dangerous for to be left in Liu's hands. Liu must have found my data line tap, though. I stopped receiving information three days ago. The last thing I heard was him talking about uh, were a pair of ancient texts that workers had discovered. Then he issued an order for further excavation should be halted until he can secure the subterranean areas. I'm betting those texts are the, are the cause of whatever is killing the workers. I have quite a bit of experience with these kinds of dangerous excavations, but an operation of this scale is beyond me. I need a team that's tough enough to get in and survive, and aren't afraid of making a mess and who can get out with the books and whatever else they can carry. Beyond the two texts, I'm willing to pay very well for whatever artifacts your team can liberate. The, most valuable, the more valuable, the better. Don't worry, they'll be going to actual museums, not some rich playboy's mansion. I've got a second uh, program in place that'll suppress uh, Lou's security system. The team will have to be careful, though. There's only so many alarms can be suppressed. Go beyond the number, and I'll scrub the mission. I've included a catalog of likely items to help the team appraise the most valuable ones. They don't need to be subtle. In fact, I prefer they make it look like a common robbery. Tell them to smash and grab whatever they like. Let me know when you find a suitable group of shadow runners. There you have it. A nice, simple robbery. Do you think you can handle something like something that basic, dear? I have faith in you. Let me know when you're ready to proceed, and I'll contact Mr. Drake. I shall take the run. Excellent. I've attached the, the directions to lose a state. Good luck. Don't screw it up. And the last one. Geomantic sabotage. Oh, boy. Ha. <sighs> Geomancy is big business here in the Free Enterprise Zone. Here in Hong Kong, Feng Shui isn't uh, just the act of rearranging your kitchen to make things look pretty. The fortunes of empires rise and fall with the ebb and flow of ki, and sometimes that flow needs a helping hand. Wu Jing Incorporated are the preeminent uh, practitioners of large-scale ki manipulation here in the Free Enterprise Zone. They've gone to great lengths to channel key from all over Hong Kong into their headquarters, an enormous monastery that calls they call the Wuxing Sky Tower. There it is focused and transformed into good fortune through the building's geomantically attuned architecture and interior decoration. Our client believes that it is time for Wuxing's good luck to run out. You are to infiltrate the Sky Tower and disrupt the flow of key throughout the building, but you are to do so in two distinct fashions. First, you must disrupt the feng shui of the office by subtly altering the environment at that level. That will consist of minor adjustment of desks, spilled water, and other small activities that are unlikely to be noticed. Ordinarily, even subtle disturbances of this nature would be noticed. This is why the client wishes you to make a much louder demonstration on the rooftop garden. The gardens is to be ransacked, utterly destroyed, set fire to things, uproot trees, that kind of stuff. Our client has also specified he would like you to destroy the large Buddhist statue in the garden, smash the thing to bits, and leave them scattered across the rooftop. This level of destruction will keep Wuxing's geomancers busy long enough 
that the more subtle disruptions below will take effect. In addition, it will send the kind of message our client would like Wu Xing to hear. I have the utmost faith in your ability to cause destruction. The more disruption you can cause on the both levels of the Sky Tower, the happier the client shall be. And as you're not a spellcaster yourself, it may be wise to bring Gobbit along. She will be able to see the most efficient ways to disrupt key in the building. Okay, we shall take the run. Good. Contact me when you finish the job. Good. I'm going to go back. Uh, let's see. Jobs directory. Pending jobs. Oh, oh, old messages we don't need. Uh, active jobs. We have three. Completed jobs. We don't have any yet. Access to Shadowlands BBS. Let's see. Search for relevant keywords. Missed connections. Your you rappelling down the side of an unnamed luxury hotel in a ball gown on Monday night. Me admiring the view from the twenty eighth floor urinals during a private soiree of an unattend of an unnamed corporation that I was infiltrating. Our eyes met briefly before you dropped out of sight. Your long dark hair had come loose from your uh, Ching Nong, uh, framing you a beautiful, flushed face. I will never forget it. You were carrying a duffel bag, bulging with stolen prototype weaponry. Well, I flinched the intel that was that goes with it. Can we connect? Very funny, Blackjack. I'm sorry the job went sideways. I got trapped in the only way out. We were supposed to have each other's backs. Just wait till you hear the way out I had to take. Gotta lay low for now, and why are we posting on this in a public message board? Terrorists in Hong Kong. That sounds like us. Been hearing buzz about some mainlander terrorists showed up in Victoria Harbor and had a shootout with the Hong Kong police force the other day. Anyone heard anything on that? Ming Pao said there were four of them and got away. One dwarf, two orcs, and a dwarf. A troll, an elf, and a human were all killed in the scene. Word is that they're members of White Star out of uh, Henan, coming here to start trouble against the executive council. Looks like there's a 50,000 New Year reward for any information leading to the capture. Hong Kong Police Force seems pretty nervous about letting these bastards walk freely around the streets. You'd think they'd actually pay out to somebody like us? Not a chance. You walk in there to claim the reward, you're getting thrown in the hole with them. The Hong Kong Police Force doesn't keep promises to the sinless. Couldn't hurt to try. Why'd you have to be such a downer? Because I know the police. They're all dirty and they're only in it to protect their paychecks. And they don't give a damn about anybody else. Believe me, I'm just looking for your best interests. Like, you know, your triad looked out for my brother? You know, he's still paying for his reconstructive surgery, you bastard. If a man wants to keep his teeth, he should pay what he owes rather than pull a gun on me. Simple than that. Okay, poetry slam! Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, poets and Shadowrunners, welcome to the first annual Shadowlands Poetry Slam. There are no rules and there are no prizes except bragging rights. Without further ado, let the versification begin. How long do you think we can keep this going before the trolls show up and uh, sysadmin shuts us down? Why would they shut us down? It's a free board. We can po we can be poetic if we want to. Just trust me, it happens. For some reason, these things always draw the worst sort of attention. Are you going to give us a poem, or are you going to just stand around complaining on why you can't? Alright, I've got one. Wait for it. Synth muscles, smart links, neural boosters, cyber limbs, all fall to grenades. A little amusing on the transcendence of life in the shadows. Very nice, sir. When the long shadows fall on Hong Kong, neon lights pierce the coming night. Uh, tread with me the velvet blackness to let no lamp shine on our deeds. That one's entitled Our Honor, Our Hour. That might have been the most pompous thing I've ever read. Try this on for size. Ah, crap. My poem wasn't pompous, you uncultivated rube. I was homage to uh, Wang Wei, the famous Tang Dynasty master of Jeju form poetry. It's traditional, unlike the ridiculous limerick that you posted. Now, now, don't think you have to take the word slam quite so literally. Hey, you people know the rules. Poetry slams have been out of bounds in the BBS since the Laughing Man debacle of 55. If you want to sling your fancy words, do it on a different forum. I'm shutting this thread down. Told you. Walled City. I've got a courier job next week that's supposed to take into the Walled City. I'm from Kuala Lumpur, and I've never been to Hong Kong, but I hear that place is dangerous as hell. Is there anything I should know? 
Oh, you've got nothing to worry about. It's just a low-cost housing development full of hard-working people. Here, take a look at this news report. This is Sonny Chang in the Horizon News on today's Sunny Side Up. Kowloon Walled City, a blight on the free enterprise zone or a low-cost housing for the economically disadvantaged. We'll introduce you to some of the hard-working residents and how they live and how they contribute to the growth and prosperity of our city. A montage sequence begins sh showcasing the dis destitute poor of Walled City going about their daily lives. The shots have been clearly chosen, showing only smiling and productive residents. You start contrast to your own experience in it. Many residents of Hong Kong regard the Walled City as a place of no return. To outsiders, it's the last stop on a long road to homelessness. Rumors abound of feral ghouls, unsafe living conditions, and triad extortion. Yet, when we went there, the reality was far different. Uh, what, what we saw will shock you, citizens of Hong Kong. Working and living like the rest of us. Their apartments are smaller and their shops are more modest. But people who live here won't be out of place anywhere in the FEZ. Citizens, citizens like shoemaker Chao Seng Tzu. The scene cuts out to an elderly man in a closet-sized stall filled with shoemaking equipment. He smiles broadly at the camera. Oh, I love it here. We have a community, you know. We're like family. Maybe we don't have a nice view as they do in uh, Repulse Bay, but I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's not a paradise, no, but it's my home. I grew up here. How could I possibly leave? The camera shifts back to Sunny Chang, who now stands in front of one of the entrances of the Walled City. Contrary to popular opinion, the Walled City serves a vital function. The poor and downtrodden find a home in the Walled City, a community where they have a voice, can work, and even prosper. Far from the being an eyesore that... The video suddenly shudders, freezes, and ends. Okay, I've decided to cut the rest of that crap. She keeps going on on what a good place the Walled City is, and how we all need it. Don't buy any of it. It may not be hell, but you can see from there, freedom freedom cowboys just uh, trying to get you in trouble. So how do you know the real story? Because I grew up there. You know what it's like? It's like eating old broth made from rat bones because there's nothing else. It's watching your neighbors sell their five-year-old son to uh, organ leggers so they don't have to starve to death. When you die in the Walled City, your neighbors cheer because they get the clothes off your back. I wouldn't wish the Walled City on my worst enemy. Wow. Thanks, Isabel. Uh, nope, we already did that. Uh, do we have any pay, pay data? Oh, yeah. There we go. Posting successful. Awesome. Do we have any more? Nope. Okay. Well then, we are done here. Alright, well. We have a lot of... We have a lot to do. I want to go check out the Cyberdock and the like. Who is Jin? Remind me again. Parlor of Five Faces. As you approach the small landing, you see three men, two elders, and a younger man hunched over a go-board. The juxtaposition of the two white-haired, white-bearded men and the black-haired man is almost comical. Together, the three resemble the small black-and-white stones of their game. Despite the variety of ambient distractions, the three men remain acutely focused on the game. One of the elders, a round-faced man with a uh, beific smile, carefully picks up a black stone and places it on the board. His opponent snorts. And a small smile flashes across his face. Almost carelessly, he snatches a white stone and deposits it on the board. The smiling man groans, and the long-faced one proceeds to collect several black pieces off the board. Ah, oh, you got me there, Jin. He laughs, a pleasant full sound. As it trails off, he spots you watching the game, a broad smile. Why, hello there, young man. Something you need? The long-faced man gives you a curious look and continues collecting back sounds. Just a gawker, Shu. It's your turn. Uh, my name's Maester. Got a second to answer a question or two? I could use a short break. How about you, Jin? Jin uh, sighs, shuddering, slumping forward. After a moment of scowling, he reluctantly speaks. Fine, a short break. The two elders turn towards the younger man. Uh, he looks to be in his early 30s, but it's difficult to tell. The skin on his face is smooth and supple, with only the suggestions of creases around the eyes, mouth, and forehead. But small gestures, a blink, a flare of the nostrils, briefly reveal the lines of his face. The man's eyes rise from the go-board and study the elders. He nods. I've been hearing about strange dreams here in Hioi. Have you guys had any nightmares recently? The three men exchange looks. 
What a coincidence. Wasn't but an hour ago that we were discussing that very thing. We have all been having bad dreams, every one of us. Interesting. You mind sharing? What makes you think you'll be comfortable sharing our dreams with complete stranger? Seems like a good way to get ourselves in trouble. Especially with what you kids can do with the Matrix you all love so much. He turns his head and pretends to spit. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always been a poor sport. But he raises a good point. Some of our dreams contain information best left private. Just as yours do, I'm sure. Having just met, how can we be sure that you respect our personal information? I'll tell you. The younger man's voice cuts through the din like a razor. The elders fall silent. He turns to you, looks you in the eyes, dark orbs burning with piercing scrutiny into yours. He nods and returns to the gaze of the go-board. I believe you're trustworthy. Please, maester, make yourself comfortable. I'll share my dream with you. Whenever you're ready. He exhales slowly and begins speaking. I dreamt of a long, dingy hall. When faced with such a thing, our one generally walks its length. So I lifted my right foot and placed it in front of me. But upon taking that first step, I found myself instead drawn an alleyway to my left. I, it wasn't there before, this alley. It appeared only as I began to walk. As I moved down the alley, I found myself surrounded by friends and loved ones. They all stood there, silently watching me with smiles on their faces. And as I passed each one of them, they fell to the ground in my wake, dropping like puppets with their with severed strings. Somehow I knew that if I followed this road to the end, I would have everything I'd ever dreamed of. But I awoke before I could reach it. He folds his hands in his lap. There's a moment of silence before Shu speaks up, the, lonely, the rosiness in his cheeks having drained away. I, too, saw the long hall. My own experience was different, however. The hall was far off in the distance. As I was looking down it from a strange height, as though I was preached on a wall high above. <clears throat> As you know, young man, Maester, you look very much like the person I saw walking that hall. He moved steadily down the path, walking in e at an even pace, and just behind him, a great and terrible shadow followed. Of course, I didn't have the best of view on the on that wall, or whatever I was, or wherever I was. It could have been anyone. Perhaps this old mind of mine is seeing your face now and misremembering the dream. He lets out a chuckle, a small flush of red returns to his cheek, and he looks over at Jin. All right, Jin, go ahead. Jin broods in his quarter, arms crossed, jaw set. I've changed my mind. I don't want to share my dream. Nonsense. Master Lu and I have both told him our dreams. It is now your turn. Jin sticks out his lower lip. No. All right. I don't want to force you to do anything. He holds his palm up towards you and says, See? Straight from the horse's mouth. I don't have to. Jin. Lou's voice is firm but soft. This is important. Jin's mouth opens and closes like a gasping fish. As he looks at Lou, Lau, his body relaxes and a sadness seems to take hold of his features. All right, all right. But you don't have to go repeating any of this, you hear me? He takes a deep breath and slowly releases it, folds his hands in his lap. My dream began as a nightmare. I dreamed of the... F failures and mistakes I've made throughout my life. The people I've let down, the competitors I've crushed, the wife who died in hospice without me. I dreamed of the family that I had abandoned. A change comes over him, his eyes brighten, and he continues uh, energetically. But then, then I dreamed of the walled city. I stood before it, its doors opened to me, and I passed inside. All of my guilt fell away. I was in this city. It was as though the city had absolved me had washed away my guilt, and I remember feeling happy. His, as his remembrance ends, so does his lightened mood. His face shrinks into a pout, and he stares glumly at the ground. There, I did it. You happy? Thank you, Jin. Let's see. Let's see. That was great, and, I don't, and don't worry. I won't abuse your personal information. Promise. Yeah, yeah. Now can we change the subject? My ulcer's acting up. Uh, let's see. I'm guessing you guys have been around these parts longer than I have. Is this sort of thing normal? If we're discuss if it were normal, we wouldn't have been huddled around discussing in whispers now, would we? Enough of that, Jin. Maester here is asked to the in earnest, in earnest of our for our advice. He deserves a proper response. Please forgive our friend. Bitter years have left him suspicious of you others. The answer to your question is no. Upsetting dreams have never been uncommon in Hioi. But the recent uh, visitations have been something different. They're darker, more vivid, stronger than normal dreams. Last night I felt consumed by the sense that something was coming. 
While my friend here felt a sense of relief and excitement as their dreams ended, I felt as though I was sitting on the precipice of some vast and terrible chasm, with a void yawning beneath my feet. Suddenly his cheeks flush, he blinks twice and looks away. Perhaps these are just the ramblings of an old man. Please forgive me. He scratched his nose, embarrassed. You speak wisely, Shio. It is foolish to embrace a thing that you do not understand. What Jin and I saw in our dreams was alluring, but, is also, but so is the light to a moth. Your instincts are still strong and sharp, my old friend. It is wise for you to trust them. Thank you. I can only hope these dreams do lead to something beautiful. There is already enough deception in the world. Can we get back to the game now? Looks like the light breaks over. It seems that way. Stop by again sometime soon, Maester. Thank you. Good luck with your game. I appreciate it, young man. We'll be seeing you. And with all that being said, uh, yeah, this is another great big talky episode, but I hope everyone's enjoying. If you do, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and best of all, share, because sharing is caring. And, uh, yeah, and I shall see you all next time.